So as we talked about in the first episode with Matthew, he's focusing more on the, the Jewish perspective, on the men's perspective, on Joseph's story and his genealogy. Now, for the second episode, we shift our focus to Luke, who is a Gentile convert. He wasn't a, a Jewish disciple of Christ during his ministry, traveling with him as one of his apostles. And so you'll notice as he opens his gospel, he gives us a little bit of a, a, a background as to who he is as well as who his audience is. So we begin in verse 1, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. In other words, to translate that into to modern English, he's saying a lot of people have written a lot of things about Jesus, but even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, so these people who saw these stories, they, they were eyewitnesses and they were ministers of the word, they've delivered these stories and we've read their writings, they're delivered to us, Luke comes to a conclusion in verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. What a great name! Theo is God, and Philus or Philo comes from the root for? Love or friendship. So a friend of God or a lover of God or a friend of God is his audience. It's probably, it could be Luke's benefactor, it could be the, the master because Luke is a physician, which doesn't mean he's gone to medical school and now he's making millions of dollars as a physician. It means he's a servant whose master sent him off to get some training to come home into the household of that master to provide some, some help when people get sick. So a physician back then isn't a, a very high and prestigious uh, occupation, it just means he's, he's been trained to, to heal and to help people with, with physical ailments. And so whoever Theophilus is seems to, to be benefiting Luke and he's writing his gospel specifically to him and consequently he's writing it in a way where he's going to expound a little bit on some of the Jewish culture, on some of the practices that you're going to read about in, this, in the gospel, where somebody who isn't an insider in Jewish culture might be saying, wait, what, what is that all about? Luke is going to give you a very balanced gospel where he's explaining things, he's focusing a lot on not just the story but on people who often get overlooked and the margins of society, often in their cultures, the women, the children, the sick, the afflicted, the oppressed, the, the shepherds, the servants, people who others aren't even going to pay any attention to, they're going to get some, some serious attention from Luke who has gathered his information from all these sources, eyewitness accounts as well as books, and so you're really going to love reading Luke's gospel if you want to see a very approachable and kind and gentle, healing, loving, forgiving Jesus. You're going to feel that perspective coming from Luke's gospel as he's sharing this story with Theophilus. Luke, like Matthew, is trying to convince people through words about who Jesus is, that he is the one who's come to save. And we get part of this in, in verse 4, it says, Theophilus, I, Luke, am writing that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So imagine Theophilus is somebody who's received the missionaries, he's had an oral presentation already about Jesus, and perhaps Theophilus is somebody of, who has some means or resources to hire somebody educated like Luke who's had access to the eyewitnesses, and Luke now takes the time to write this, this biography about Jesus to convince Theophilus about the gospel. This is important to know about the gospels. The underlying word gospel does mean the good news. It's related to the word for angel. Somebody who's a messenger who tells you these amazing things, this joy of salvation. It turns out that the, the structure or the narrative style 
that the Gospels use, primarily Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is a biography, but not a biography in the way we consider it. Biographies today are these like massive, large books of like every little detail in somebody's life. Anciently, biographies were much shorter and they typically would only start um, around the public career of some famous or compelling individual. So consider the Gospel of Mark. We don't hear anything about Jesus until he gets baptized. Matthew and Luke are the only ones that tell us about the birth. And then they essentially skip over much of Jesus' life and get right to his public ministry. So these biographies are written to highlight around clustered themes about the character of Jesus. So when, G when Luke says, I am going to write in order, he means I'm going to use a thematic structured approach to collect these stories about Jesus and present them to you to convince you that Jesus is the one who has come to save. And our hope is that we can get the same message. Sure, sometimes there's details that might be a little confusing as we read the New Testament. It's an ancient time, ancient culture. But ultimately, these texts have been preserved to also convince us that we too can believe and know that Jesus is the Christ, the one who comes to save. So as you say that, look at the name once again. You have this, this man who is the, the recipient of this letter, or this gospel rather, that uh, Luke is writing, and his name, remember, is a lover of God or a friend of God. Well, if you take what Taylor just said, oh my heavens, I'm in Luke's audience. Luke, I get it, Luke was writing to an individual in his day named Theophilus. Symbolically, metaphorically, Luke is writing to you. You're taking time to study the life of Christ. You are a Theophilus. You are a friend of God, a lover of God, and so you can take this, this gospel very personally. You can see Luke telling you these stories, even though you're not that individual guy back in the first century, the principle's the same. He's trying to convince you that Jesus is the Christ, even if you feel like you're on the margins of society, overlooked, forgotten, not talked about.